politicians. I like politicians. I am friends with politicians from both sides of the aisle. Politicians are great until they stick their noses into things they don't understand, such as most things. <laughs> then, politicians turn into ratchet-jawed purveyors of monkey doodle and baked wind. They are piddlers upon merit, beggars at the door of accomplishment, thieves of livelihood, envy-coddling tax lice, applauding themselves for giving away other people's money. They are the lap dogs of the poli sci class returning to the vomit of collectivism. They are the pig herders who, tending that sow who eats her young the welfare state. They are muck dwelling bottom feeders growing fat on the worries and disappointments of the electorate. Preach it. They are the ditch carp in the great river of democracy. <laughs> freedom without democracy, we can't have democracy without politics. Now watching the political process, it's scary. It's like watching our children become teenagers. There's not much we can do to help it, and nothing we can do to stop it. But we can't just declare ourselves to be apolitical any more than we can declare ourselves to be a parental. I mean, we can give up on politics the way we can give up on being parents. I mean, here are the car keys, kids. You know where the liquor cabinet is. Uh, why don't you take my ATM card while you're at it? See you when you're 30. <laughs> now, I'm still a parent. I'm still a parent. I'm still politically engaged, hard as it is sometimes. We've got the Democrats. Democrats are the party that promises government can make us richer, smarter, taller, and, 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 and with better health care. Uh, uh, policy insurance and, and take 10 strokes off our golf game. We got the Republicans there, the party that promises to make government smaller, and they succeeded uh, with their part of the government, the number of Republicans in the House and Senate. <laughs> the White House definitely smaller than it once was. Democrats say we don't know what's wrong with capitalism, but we can fix it. Uh, Republicans say uh, uh, there's nothing wrong with capitalism, and we can fix that. <laughs> and all politicians, Democrats and Republicans, they want government to solve every one of the world's problems from curing cancer to getting Angelina Jolie's tattoos removed. You know? <laughs> they want government to do this. Government can't run a post office. I mean, government has trouble figuring out where mail goes, and mail has got our address right on the front end. <laughs> healthcare, healthcare. healthcare. First, in the first place, why was the whole healthcare debate about insurance? Insurance. I mean, when your house is on fire, do you call Allstate or do you call 911? You know, treatment is what we want. We'll figure out how to pay for the treatment if we live. If we don't live, the hell with it. <laughs> <laughs> healthcare reform. We're being told that healthcare providers will provide better healthcare and more healthcare and healthcare to a larger number of people, and that all this is somehow going to cost less. Now, I only got as far as practical math in high school, but that doesn't add up. Somebody is lying. And P.S. to the Obama administration, uh, Hillary Clinton was already here. With, 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 she already reformed health care 17 years ago. You know? Just the outline of Hillary's 1993 health care plan was 1,400 pages long. You could stand on it to paint the ceiling. The entire U.S. Constitution can be printed on eight pages. That's eight pages to run a whole country for 233 years versus three reams of government pig Latin if you slam your thumb in the car door. No? Now, of course, there's a simpler way. Simpler way to make health care cheaper, just make it worse. You know? Government can do that. Government controlled health care is going to drive the best people out of the business. I mean, who wants to spend a million years studying to be a doctor just to become a government bureaucratic hack? I mean, someday we will be wheeled in for a heart bypass operation, and the surgeon is going to be the guy who right now is doing the tax assessment on our house. You know? <laughs> See, politics sends us this message. Politics sends us this message. Some people make more money than other people. Some people are rich and other people are poor. We better close that income disparity gap because it is so unfair. Well, I am here to speak in favor of unfairness. I have got a 12-year-old daughter. I got a 12-year-old daughter. And that's all I hear all day long. That's not fair. That's not fair. That's not fair. And finally, one day, I just said, you're cute. That's not fair. Your family's pretty well off. That's not fair. You were born in America. That's not fair. Darling, you had just better get down on your knees and pray to God that things don't start getting fair for you. <laughs> Using politics 
to create economic fairness, it is a sin. It's a sin. The Bible's very clear about this. Now, it just so happens that, that I don't happen to agree with, with some of my friends who think that God is in charge of politics. I mean, what I think is that observe politics in America, observe politics around the world, observe politics down through history. Does it look like God is in charge? No. Now that would be the other fellow who is running politics, okay? But in one sense, I do get my politics from God, I do get my politics from the Bible. Specific, specifically, I get my politics from the Tenth Commandment. First nine commandments, they concern theological principles and social law, thou shalt not make graven images, steal, kill, etc. Fair enough. But then there is the Tenth Commandment. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Okay, now here are God's basic rules about how we should live, a brief list of sacred obligations and solemn moral precepts, and right at the end of it is don't envy your buddy's cow. How did that make the top ten? Why would God, with just ten things to tell Moses, choose as one of them jealousy about livestock? And yet you think about how important that commandment is to a community, to a nation, to a democracy. If you want a mule, if you want a pot roast, if you want a cleaning lady, don't whine about what the people across the street have. Go get your own. Tenth Commandment sends a message to Congress, to the White House, to the State House, to all of our politicians. It is a message about their political promises for fairness for bailouts, for stimulus packages, for, for, for entitlement programs, for tax, borrow, and spend policies, and for every other kind of fairness they want to give us. And the message is clear and concise, go to hell. <laughs> there you go.